What's up everyone, it's Avtech coming at you today with a pretty incredible $700 gaming PC featuring the GTX 1060. So before I get right into the part selection, let me give you a breakdown of what kind of FPS you can expect in a variety of games. Overwatch at 1080p, epic quality settings, 115 frames per second. Doom on Ultra using Vulcan, 140 frames per second. GTA 5 Ultra FXAA, 105 frames per second. Rise of the Tomb Raider and DirectX 12, very high FXAA, 92 frames per second. And Star Wars Battlefront on Ultra, 83 frames per second. And I've also posted this entire $700 PC build on kit.com. It's a really cool site where you can post, share, discuss, and browse other people's kits, PC setups, desk setups, a variety of different types of technology setups, and much more. So you can check out my personal page at kit.com slash awe of tech. Well, let's get right into the build. For the processor, I went with the i5 6500's quad-core Skylake CPU clocked at 3.2 gigahertz. It's on the LGA 1151 socket, and you will not be noticing limitations on the CPU side of things, given that this processor has those four powerful Skylake cores, and this component will set you back around $200, although I think this is one of the most important parts in a gaming PC build. For the motherboard, I went with one from MSI, the H170 MA Pro Micro ATX motherboard for just $85, and there's also a $10 mail-in rebate for those of you that are extra thrifty. So you really can't go all out when it comes to motherboards in a gaming PC, but given that this is a little bit of a more budget-oriented build, I didn't want to have the motherboard going over $100, but this really has all the essentials that you would want out of a motherboard. It supports up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 2133 MHz random access memory. It has high quality Japanese made solid caps that are used more in high end motherboards. Also, it has MSI's very intuitive, comprehensive Click BIOS 5, has SATA Express, RAID support, two PCIe slots, plenty of connectivity with a VGA port, USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, audio connectors, USB 2.0 ports. And I should reiterate that this is of the micro ATX variety so the motherboard comes in at a bit of a more compact size than your full-size ATX motherboard and also I really like the aesthetic design of this motherboard with that black theme that really will match the look to a lot of different color schemes. For RAM I went with two four gigabyte sticks from Corsair the Vengeance LPX at 3000 megahertz for just $43 so this is a really good price to get eight gigabytes and I don't think you really would need anything more then eight gigabytes for a gaming PC build. Although our motherboard does have two more DIMMs if you wanted to upgrade and add a bit more RAM down the road. But as it is, it's really hard to beat this nice looking kit of RAM from Corsair with those nice looking black heat spreaders. For the graphics card, the featured component for this PC build, we went with one from Gigabyte, the WinForce OC GTX 1060, three gigabyte variant for just $209. So in OC mode, this has an advertised base clock of 1582 megahertz and a boost of 1797 megahertz and likely a bit more with some good fortune. Also, it has that four plus one power phase design and it has those two really nice looking wind force fans on this cooler as well as a nice looking backplate that says gigabyte on it. So it's really hard to beat this graphics card at $209. I know some of you might shy away from this three gigabyte variant. It is a lot of performance for just three gigabytes of video buffer although from most of the benchmarks i've seen from gamers nexus hardware unbox and jay's two cents comparing the three gigabyte gtx 1060 to the six gigabyte gtx 1060 there's only around a nine percent difference in terms of performance at 1080p so that should alleviate some concerns of that three gigabyte video buffer although if you do have the extra money for around 50 dollars more you can pick up the six gigabyte variant and get that extra video buffer and a little bit more performance and also i should note that if you want your video card to have that multi gpu support in the future, then I would go with an RX 480 or an RX 470 from Team Red, although I am a big fan of the GeForce experience like I know many of you are. For storage, I went with the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB 7200 RPM mechanical hard drive for just $50. And I know you probably see the storage option recommended quite a bit for PC builds, but rightfully so, for just $50, you get a terabyte capacity. You're going to have plenty of space to store all your movies, music, games, work documents, and any applications that you use. 
It's also quite reliable, and at 7200 RPM, your system is going to be snappy, fast, responsive, and those load weight and boot times aren't going to start to annoy you. That said, if you do want an even snappier system, you could invest down the road into a solid state drive because I know SSD prices have come down a bit over the years, getting more and more affordable. But for just the base and starting point of the system, I wanted to have that mass storage capacity and also didn't want to drive the price of the entire build up too much. For the case from Corsair, I went with the Carbide Series Spec M2 case. That's right, this is for the Micro ATX motherboard. It's really similar in design and appearance to the Corsair Spec 2 case that I have, although this is a little bit smaller and I would say design-wise a little more modern and a little better looking. It's got that really nice looking giant side window and included 120 millimeter fan, front USB 3.0, a five and a quarter drive bay up top, built-in mounts for dual high performance two and a half inch solid state drives and tool free 3.5 inch drives for those mechanical hard drives. And even though it is a micro ATX case, there's still plenty of room to work in. And you also get that added benefit of having a smaller footprint with a micro ATX case. And like I was saying, it's very high quality from Corsair. And lastly, for the power supply, powering up all these incredible components, from EVGA, the 600 watt bronze certified non-modular power supply. So this doesn't break the bank at just $50 and 600 watts is more than enough for this build given the great efficiency of the Pascal GTX 1060 as well as the Skylake i5 that we have in this system. You could get away with much less, possibly a 430 or 500 watt. Although looking at the current pricing, they are priced quite similar. So might as well give yourself a little bit of headroom. You also will get that incredible customer service from EVGA and 24 seven technical support in the very unlikely event that you need it. And with that bronze certification, you'll get up to 85% efficiency under typical load. It has a 120 millimeter from experience, completely silent fan, some of the highest qualities capacitors and that high amperage single rail design, as well as a three year warranty. All right, guys, well, that's it for this video. So this $700 gaming PC for gaming at 1080p, it really knocks it out of the park. You'll be very satisfied getting the latest architecture from Skylake as well as Pascal with the GeForce experience and not breaking the bank too much at $210 for a GTX 1060 right now. So like I was saying, be sure to check the links in the description box down below for current pricing, further reading, further information, or you can also look up this entire build at kit.com slash awe of tech. That's it for this video, guys. You know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed it, help my channel grow. Comment if you have a comment down below, a suggestion for a future video, or if you feel I should have gone with a different configuration with this build, it would have more efficiently allocated the $700 within the budget. Let me know down below. This is John from Tech. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, be sure to subscribe, turn those notifications on. Catch you guys in the next video.